stick around with us because as you can see on the screen here, we got the Shank family with uh, Mr. Jordan Shank, Steve Shank, who we call Papa Shank. Uh, we got Michaela Reynolds and we got Devin Bowersox. Win early, win big, leveraging the system for fast success. It's going to be a dandy. So let's hit, uh, let's hit some numbers for us real quick. And forgive me if I go through these pretty quickly. Anastasios Papadopoulos. Man, where's this guy been? It's a good one. I love this name. Man, Congratulations, strong. Dollars, pretty amazing. Sylvia Collins, first month in the organization as a new agent, thirty-seven thousand six hundred twenty-seven dollars. Boom, well done. Top three producers: Joshua Quillen, Matthew Hernandez, and DJ Debt Free Keith Fonseca, number one agent for the week with thirty-eight thousand eight hundred seventy-nine bucks. Sean Hogue, Misty Centron, and Cassandra Mack, number one for the month of September, which was the largest month we've ever experienced as, a, as an organization. So if you're number one for the month, Cassandra, that says a lot. So well done. $78,000 in premium. App count wise, it was Jenny, excuse me, Jimmy Amata with 19 apps and Misty Centron for the month with 61 applications. Sylvia Fox is the top Medicare sub writer for the week with 1402. Brenda Smith for the month with 2111. Top disability writer was Tommy, excuse me, Tracy Rocanello. And number one was uh, for the month was Amanda Torma. Number one IUL producer for the week was Latasha Nelson with 28,800 bucks. Number one was Mariah Meistus with 41,321 bucks just on the IUL board. Congratulations, Mariah. Top annuity producers, number one for the week, Alicia Hill with 600,000. Brett Loftus with 1.672 million for the month. Well done, sir. Top DFL writer for the week was the DJ himself with $45,000. And got, uh, got whooped up on by George One Team Matthews though with 57,200. Way to go, Georgie. New writers, Darren Stubbs and Jamie Susie took the cake in the base, Jacob Pogue, and Christopher Clark in the direct. Jacob Pug, number one overall. Uh, a lot of SNAs, as you'll see here in just a second, but congratulations to Griff, Gabby, Fred, Kelly, and Sarah Reineke, all tied for first place with two in the base. Jacob Pogue, number one, with six for the week. Well done. All right, let me see how quickly I can hit these names and hopefully not butcher them. Congratulations, all of you season new agents. Chandler Henderson, Rouse, Johnston Moore, Sellers, McDole, Sowell, Lewis, Martin, Wood, Brennis, Williams, which I'm assuming is a typo and it's not Will I Am's mm. old rapper. Remember that person? Kafton, Carey, Emery, McDermott, Farmer, Colin Smith, Cassie and Long, Martin, Latoa, Taylor, Janicelli, Guyan, Vanderwitz. Lambert, Hammonds, Kester, and Sims. Congratulations, all of you seasoned new agents. Key leader top for the week was uh, Gabby and Ike Manello, Bryant Mitchell on the recruiting board, uh, tied with a bunch of people, Edward Puckett, Joanna Doibin, and also look at all the new writer getters down here on the key leader board. Um, well done, everybody. For the month, a key leader went out, Cassandra Mack did, and got 190729 bucks, Spivey. And look at all of these numbers. I mean, all these key leaders have massive numbers. Congratulations. Uh, for the month, Tom McDonald with eight recruits and Charity Pruger with seven new riders. JPV took the cake for the week with 65000 Gabby and Fred with five recruits. EJ Johnson and JPV also with three new riders. JPV, $323,000 as an AO is a big number. Jerry Choate and JPV tied for recruiting at 16 and John Paul Vetter with 12 new writers. On the agency director board, David Alvarado, just shy of $200,000. Mark Neubauer, 13 recruits, and Sarah Reineke with eight new writers. Uh, Alvarado, $582,000 on the board. Way to go, buddy. I see you, Sarah Reineke, sneaking up too. Mm -hmm. Big number, Sarah, for his long as you've been in the business, as short, I should say, as you've been in the business. Um, marvelous Mark Neubauer with 58 recruits and Sarah Reineke with 31 new riders. Eileen Balmer is the top rad for the week. Beth Maddox and Frank Brenes with seven recruits each and Eileen Balmer with seven new riders. 
for the month. Just shy of a million dollars, Eileen Bomber. Jerry Cantrell with 34 recruits and 29 new riders for Eileen. Way to go. MVPs, uh, Griff Martin, 180,000, almost 181. Chris Cook with 32 recruits and Christopher Clark with 11 new riders. Got a text from Clark saying, uh, killed it with all kind of records in his Everyone organization. Records, Love you. Sorry. So Got a buzz, Casey. So many texts and stuff in the chat. I'm blowing up over Everyone's here. Everyone's breaking records. I'm blowing up over here. I'm trying to stay focused. It's and crazy. I got a bug flying around my head. Chris Cook with 120 recruits, 577 grand. Uh, good weeks by a lot of you, Chris Cook, uh, or months rather, with 26 new riders as well, man. Woo. Uh, the Godfather, $169,000 for the week. Jimmy Spilldinner's team with 12 recruits. Mike and Jennifer with 15 new riders. Nate Offert, though, took it for the month. Just shy of a million. Is that a record, Nate? I would like to know, inquiring minds. 69 recruits for the month. And the Godfather with 33 new riders. Well done. Uh, the Mank Tank with $178,000. 11 recruits. And Darren Stubbs and Sean and Scott. All with six new riders for the week. Scott Mank. Scott Mank and Darren Stubbs. 26 new riders. Way to go, man. Mank's on a tear, isn't he? Killing it. Blazing a trail with the Mank tank. Uh, Lynn Watkins with $719,000 for the week. 26 recruits tied with Ryan and Michelle Miller and 21 new riders. Just saw where Ashley and Tyler had a record week as well, record month. Mm -hmm. All the way around is what I'm hearing. Uh, 3.3 million for Lynn, 172 recruits and 79 new riders way to go ashley and tyler and linwood easy eddie pritchett that's gotta be a record right 1.3 million for the week 1.325 <laughs> hey is that a record i need to know i Six think so three, i think he just broke three. his own record from last week he might be on the same stair-stepping path that we've been on yep. uh also 45 new riders 5.78 million for the week, Edgardo with 360 oh, yeah. recruits <laughs> and 152 new riders. That'll do it. That will do it. Marshall Whalen, 1.2 million for the week. Good week by Purdy and Delaney as well. 78 recruits and 47 new riders. Uh, Marshall was 5.6 million, which is a monster number. Uh, 424 recruits and 217 new riders. And I know Marshall's kind of getting the highlight because he's number one, but look at the Purdy numbers, the Delaney numbers. There's plenty to celebrate going all the way around. So congratulations, Pritchett. Uh, back on top of the direct board, Chris Cook is the top recruiter and Jacob Pogue is the top new rider getter. And for the month, Jacob Pogue eked it out. Didn't eke it out. Actually took it by almost $300,000. I think it's because he does about 10 fill frees a day, but he says he's going back down to two and then he's going to go back down to one half of one. <laughs> he doesn't really do 10. I'm kidding. I think 58 new writers though, Pogue, you're doing something. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, he's doing something. All I could think about when you said that, Brandon, was an old, uh, what movie is it? When the, the little kid says, I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it sounds like a movie I would like. As a kid, I was all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Were code you? Red. That's no, they didn't have Code Red when I was a kid. Was it Casey that liked Code Red? And that's not Casey. Uh... <laughs> that was Lonnie. Was that was Lonnie, Lonnie Creaseman. Lonnie that was one of that was one of Casey's alternate personalities. Yeah. Um, Mellow Yellow and Mountain Dew was my jam, though, man. If I could, if I could squeeze a quarter out of my mom. Ooh. Melody, it was cheap back then because I, I was I was at a daycare at a church and like the, the the pop machine was pretty cheap. I'm from Alabama and I say pop. <laughs> what about to say? Kind of a northern thing, isn't it? I don't know, but our opinion around here is if you got the best word for something, regardless of where you're from, why don't you use it? I totally agree. And pop is clearly yep. the best word. Anybody pop that says, yeah, it's Coke or soda or whatever is like pop. Say it's, the word pop. To say. say it's there's no way you can deny saying the word pop is more fun than saying soda. Way better. 
And so, anybody wants to disagree with me, I'd love to hear your rationale in the Q&A, but I just want to go ahead and tell you preemptively that you're wrong. Unless you've come up with a word that you live in, like, I don't know, you grew up in Puerto Rico and it's called this. And we're like, well, that we might need to discuss that. I kind of like, I like soda pop kind of. Well, we call them water pops at our house because they're all, they all drink, um, I say they all drink the soda waters, but they all drink uh, about a third of a soda water. So Alvarado, sorry, we got on a tangent there with $100,000. Mark Neubauer with 11 recruits and Darren Stubbs and Jamie Susie with four new riders. For the month, though, shifted up a little bit on us. Ashley and Tyler killed it, 401000 almost 402. New Bowers just turned into a recruiting machine. He's kind of flying under the radar a little bit, but have y'all noticed? Yep. I personally have taken notice. Jamie Susie with 18 new riders. Well done. Leadership, pure and simple. Mr. B-Dubs, over to you. You bet. You bet. Um, well, to uh, to be the best, you've got to learn from the best, and we're grateful for expert symmetry coaches. Uh, Mark Herringshaw, who you met last week, you can go to the next slide, Brandon. Uh, all the information on this is in uh, 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 HQ under uh, training and symmetry coaching. And for information, go to coaching at quality.com. But I do want to show you this again. And these things uh, that we call coaching cohorts that we launch, nothing random about them. A lot of thinking goes into uh, what we're offering in terms of these groups. So this one is really special in that uh, Mark's just brilliant and outstanding, and you'll experience lots of transformation working with Mark. Um, but this one's special in that, again, that, that key leader level, learning to become a leader worth following. You've got to go know what leadership is, uh, know who you are as a leader, and know how to apply it. And so uh, this is going to be a great one. Uh, go ahead and you know, follow up on coachingequality.com to, to follow up there. But yes, we have Mr. Chris Maslin on the call with us today. So Chris, you can unveil and uh, go ahead and leave this slide up for just a minute, Brandon. Um, Chris, good to have you with us. How's uh, how's things at the Biltmore today? Going great. Great to be with you. And thanks again for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to be uh, round two of our Staffing Simplified Cohort. And just to spend a couple minutes with you, first of all, I don't think... Uh, I've talked a little bit about your background last time, but you know, Chris is the vice president of HR and organizational development uh, for the Biltmore. And uh, not only that, he's the executive director of the Biltmore Center for Professional Development, which takes all of their best practices and uh, exports them to other companies. And I mean, the Biltmore has a, a world renowned reputation for how they do things for their service levels. Um, and Chris is no, um, small part of that is the overseas uh, talent management, recruitment, training, professional development of over 2,000 employees, right? I could go on about Chris's resume, but um, the, the testimonials are in. If you go to the next slide, Brandon, um, a number of people um, really benefited from this. Jordan is one that he may even mention this uh, on the call um, because uh, applying some of the insights that we talk about in the symmetry staffing blueprint um, you know, made a big difference even on the revenue side of his business. And so we're really excited to offer this again. And before I just let Chris talk about it for just a minute, um, just want to say that you'll notice we're going to be offering the same group cohorts over and over again, because we're building a learning and development system that's based on your needs, the biggest growth opportunities and biggest growth areas that you're going to need to learn in the business to be successful. And we're just going to wash, rinse, repeat. We're going to get better at those, adjust those as we go. And so you'll know if you're a new agent, our sales 101, 10-week uh, challenge, those are some great initial ones. For the staffing one, this obviously is something that uh, eventually in this business to be effective, you're going to want to learn how do I hire, onboard, and train a, a, not just a, an, an agent in a 1099 structure, but actually a staff person. What is that relationship look like that's different? How do I actually do that uh, in a way that gets the most productivity and helps that person flourish? So Chris, again, super grateful. And I'd love for you just to talk for a few minutes about um, what your experience was in the first cohort. What are some of the things you're going to be talking about? And then we'll just steer everybody again to HQ and to coachingequality.com for more info, but love to hear from you for a few minutes. Yeah. Thanks so much. Um, great to be with y'all today. And again, um, this has just been a fantastic program, something I've really been looking forward to 
um, starting the next cohort of because we had such a great experience um, in round one and had um, some wonderful participants that really engaged, got a lot out of it. Um, we do uh, a lot here to really set you up to learn from one another. So while I'll be, uh, of course, teaching and providing uh, some content that will springboard your thinking, um, we'll also bring in some some guests. Um, you know, Brian was uh, Brian Williamson was with us. We also brought in De Brian Delaney. Hopefully, I can uh, twist his arm to join us again. Um, had some great insight from them, but um, really, we got such great learning. I think from one another and sharing. Um, some insights that, that, you know, where people are at different stages of their business and, and how to grow. Um, and I think that was really a, a key first step for us is helping people understand not only um, just like the, the, the vision that you want to have for your own business, but what kind of um, people organization it will require for you to get there. And then thinking about the different ways to tackle that, whether you need contractors or W-2 employees or, you know, what are you going to need? And I think, um, you know, something I've re recognized for myself is that we all stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, you know, none of us would be where we are today without incredible people that have been part of our story, right? And so as you grow your business, um, you are going to be part of more people's story. You're gonna bring more people along with you. You're gonna um, ask more and more of folks that want to um, help themselves succeed and, and for you to succeed as part of that. Um, but you can't do this on your own. And so it's a recognition that as we look at this program and how you wanna grow your business, that you're gonna need some folks on your team um, that can directly kind of complement your your own strengths as well as some blind spots that you may have and finding that right team um, and, and putting them together and helping really develop them, make them the best versions of themselves. Um, that's what we're really all about. Um, so helping you kind of put together a staffing plan, putting together a structural plan, helping you think about things like recruitment, performance management, coaching. Those are some key elements of what we're talking about, uh, but it's really collaborative. And, um, you know, we have some accountability partners that are also utilized outside of our program so you can really learn from one another and think about the applications um, from each session of, of how you're going to take it and actually apply it to making it super usable and approachable content. Um, but yeah, we had a great time uh, last go around, had a lot of fun together. I really enjoyed getting to know so many fantastic symmetry um, leaders. And um, as you all consider this, I hope that you'll uh, consider joining our next cohort and hopefully we'll have more in the future and continue to get better and refine this over time to really meet your needs and outcomes. You bet. Well, thanks, Chris. And I, and just final thought is to say, right, um, Chris is the value add to that group, minus obviously the what you'll learn from each other. You know, come with your questions, issues. He's an, truly an expert in the whole area of staffing and organizational development, and it's things you can apply to your agent. So um, really take advantage of his expertise and uh, play. try to play stump the chump, I call it. Uh, get all your uh, HR questions, all of your uh staffing management questions that'd be a lot of fun so super grateful for for chris and uh, excited for that next cohort thank you buddy you bet Love it. chris chris um i've got one quick question for you though casey and i forever have wanted to um be able to have like a sleepover in the biltmore estate <laughs> not at the inn but i want to sleep in like george vanderbilt's bed one night is there any way that you can make that happen yeah absolutely oh. yeah okay. it's not a problem i'll call you later we also want to set up a fox hunt so <laughs> We'll uh we'll get back I want, with you. I want to tour some of those uh those secret tunnels, secret path. Yeah. That we'll you're, go you're full going. VIP for you guys. <laughs> Let's do it. Nice. Thanks, Chris. Love that. I see, I see, I see a little uh I see a corporate staff retreat coming on. And Chris is the man. He you you won't be surprised. He'll, he'll hook us up. Could you imagine a really cool. contest where all the winners got to have a sleepover in the Biltmore? You're gonna have to work. We'll give you some time on that one, but maybe a little time, but we'll make it happen. All right. Really appreciate you. Buddy. That's awesome. All right. We could have used some of Chris's stuff back back in the day, huh? Oh. Because yeah. it is a different beast, hire, you know, hiring actual corporate employees versus hiring right. 99. It's it's a lot, lot to learn, a lot to navigate. So accelerate that that we, learning process. We probably did it completely wrong as many times as we could. So yeah. I couldn't agree, couldn't agree more. Um, I think we've got Resi on. Maybe Spivey, is that heard? Right? Yeah, we're okay. here, buddy. Man, look at these numbers. Month one in the books. And already some pretty big things happening, bud. Yeah, some exciting things to, to go over. Obviously, we launched it at conference. We're still in the process of uh, training multiple hierarchies right now. But looking at the numbers just from September, you know, 246 resets. We see a lot of them going to DFL. Obviously, that stuff is going in our hierarchy. But if you think about the resets that are going to QRS and the retirement solutions team, 
that stuff because the nature of it being written as LOA and then being paid out through the finance team in September through the finance team for resets and the QRS, they've paid out 81,000, but that, that does not include all of the app splits for the resets that went to DFL where people were actually split on the application. So the numbers based off of based off of this just in September, we had a target in September to get to 100 resets a week. The last week, I think we were at 82. But if we look at the just the last couple of days, we've been averaging 11 resets a day the last couple of days. So that puts us on track this month for over um, 300 for over 300 resets. So we're uh, we're doing well. We're still focusing on the training, and uh, we will be leaderboarding soon. And uh, really excited to see the amount of payouts that have been happening. But I, I do want to address uh, one thing. There's one thing with the leaderboards that I need to make sure that all the subject matter experts are doing is that they're reporting inside of OP the right way. And I know Melissa has been working on reaching out to all the SMEs with the new OP process. So if Melissa hasn't reached out to you, she's uh, she'll be doing that the rest of this week. So we can have better visibility, leaderboard it. And uh, we've got some amazing things coming down the coming down the pipe. So exciting! Okay, so I am. Um, what is one piece of advice I think that everybody needs to to hear right now? Maybe they're they haven't gotten started yet. They're they're still waiting. What is step one? Give them some advice because we we honestly feel like this is a way for organizations to grow their business by 20, 30 percent without taking any additional leads, um, which means it's a great way for directs agency owners and producers to grow their income by more than that potentially uh yeah the the uh, biggest for the biggest first step is to go into hq and the training scripts and start reviewing all of the fif training documents and then go to next tuesday as we we're going to talk about it in a couple slide next tuesday at 11 a.m you know a lot of the focus has been all oh, the passive income that you can make the passive income that you can make but we forget that really the FIF helps you out with your mortgage protection sale and a general life sale. Yes, it's nice for the passive income, but it also helps you create that logical emotional case as to why they need uh, the insurance and the reason why you're there for MP or general life. So we're going to have a special guest on next Tuesday because that's really the main, the main thing for the agencies that haven't been doing the FIF as part of their sales process, making sure everybody understands how it really helps you out in that mortgage protection or general life sale. So the two things that you can do, HQ, training, training scripts, all that FIF reset documentation and make sure you're on Tuesday at 11 a.m. because we're gonna have a special guest go over a bunch of case studies of the FIFs and how they would use that to help out their mortgage protection or general life sale. Beautiful, appreciate you, buddy. Yep. Good stuff. Uh, Quildy Digis, standing orders. You've seen this uh, in our PowerPoints here for the last several weeks. Head over to HQ to get your lead orders in today. Um, maybe one more quick announcement on leads. I don't think that we have another slide for it. Don't necessarily need a slide for it. Um, lead prices are going up next week. Is that right? Next week? I think it's the Monday. Maybe it's the 17th is our actual date, which is that Monday following next week. Um, this is not the lead. 17th. 17th. Thank you, Todd. This is not the increase that is going to be accompanied with the contract raise. Just to be clear, this is an increase that is brought on by the craziness in the mortgage market. So you will see, I mean, technically at the end of the fourth quarter, there will be another lead increase, but it's really just right sizing and maintaining that three and a half to four times your investment, uh, which will accompany with the the uh, the carrier increase, the contract, the uh, commission increase. That's what I was looking for there. So um, yeah, and that's just on uh, mail-in and call-in leads. So digital leads, that's right. they might have changed and adjusted up or down by a few cents here and there as we we're continuing to kind of concentrate on making sure that we're getting the right data to get the value-based lead pricing the right way. But so what we did on those, just the mail-in mortgage protection leads and the call-ins are going up next week or whenever you were saying, Brent, I think it's on the 17th. And then the target is December 1st for the actual comp increase. And then the lead increase that is basically squaring that comp increase up. So 
that the target on that is December 1st. It may be a little bit early. It may be a little bit late. As for now, um, Brandon, you know, we just want to make sure everyone is focusing on the main core carriers, especially the new, the new uh, product with um, SBLI, you know, with QLT, um, you know, not all carriers are going to be going up 10 points. Some carriers are going to be going up five points. Some carriers are not going to be going up at all. There might even be a product or two that are going down a little bit. All of this to square up the exact spreads that the company needs to just be right in the sweet spot and keep our keep, keep the innovation rolling, keep everything we have going rolling. So, um, you know, everyone needs to be kind of focused on those main core carriers and core products. If you're not riding with those core carriers and core products right now, start to make that shift because come December 1st, you're going to get that pop. Yes, start making that shift. Now, what would you say to someone um, or really to anyone just about this this increase in uh, in lead cost for the direct mail and the call-in leads? Um, I think you're saying to me earlier that if you are someone that has traditionally gotten four times or more on the mortgage protection direct mail or the call-in direct mail, you may want to continue taking those. If you have struggled with those, if you're not as strong of a closer, yeah. maybe you don't want to continue taking those. And that's fine. If you are the type of person that has to work the same type of leads that you've always worked, I say that you can do those. There's going to be a cost increase to them. Obviously, two of those coming. Um, yeah. Time it's to learn it. If you've historically struggled with hitting just the, the, the basic average of four times you know, return on your investment, then maybe kind of continue your journey towards digital leads more and don't even worry about the, the leads that we just had to have an increase on, you know? Um, but if you're the type of person that is, you know, in the upper percentile generally in our company, when it comes to the value-based lead pricing, because we see those numbers, the top, you know, top 20% of our company that works those are in the six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times your and, and your re return on investment so an adjustment like this on the mail ends is not really going to affect you that much it's still going to be highly profitable regardless these leads are still under what you know lead vendors out there are charging for a direct mail mortgage protection lead so you're still you're we're still under pricing the leads there's still a amount of subsidy subsidy that is in place on those but just pay attention to that value-based lead pricing this is this is our this is our solution for the lack of profitability that's in the industry right now. And mainly, you know, from lead vendors that don't really care what your profit zone is. They just, they just want to keep selling leads. So it doesn't matter if they keep selling to you or someone else. Whereas, you know, we're in the game of, of, of you know, making money on insurance with you. And leads have to, uh, leads have to be profitable for both parties, you know, both the company and for you. So, this is where they're priced for now. And um, yeah, if you're, if you're pretty good at it, then keep, keep buying them. But again, what we're seeing right now, Brandon, is uh, for the first time ever, we are working and distributing more digital leads than we are direct mail leads. Yep. We've, we've flipped the equation now, and this has been a pretty rapid over the past you know, couple few months of evolution. And we only see that continuing to increase. It wouldn't surprise us if we, um, you know, we got up into Q1 and we're 70, 30, 80, 20. Um, why not? If these leads are continuing to show us the value, then we're going we're gonna to keep pushing them and you guys keep buying them. Love it. Yeah, buddy. Love it, love it. All right, here we go. Champions Cup leaderboards. On the champions division, it's still John Perez out in front a little bit. James Satterfield in the base shop out in front just a touch. Misty Centron out in front just a touch. And look for more of those in HQ. Um, Ethan Drum, I see you are at the canteen this morning or this afternoon. Welcome. I am. I'm down here in the land of Jordan Janet Matthews at Palmetto Bluff. So, Nice. Um, enjoying, enjoying some nice coastal and Spivey. It is Talladega Nights. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to tell Talladega Nights <laughs> is I'm so jumped out on Mountain Dew. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> so really quick, 
Um, My Quility, thank you guys so much for all that you've done to use My Quality. It's been some really great stories of how agents have used this to even help people. We had an agent last week who even used this to help someone get so much savings back, it paid for their whole DFL policy just with their prescription changing on one diabetes medication. So huge wins, resources that we're coming out with. Last weekend, we met with our directs, uh, some of our directs in our company to really figure out what the exact training tools you needed, what the field was saying they needed. So next week, we're going to have updates on training resources, what to do, but now to the leaderboards. So top directs, we had a three-way tie for second, Brandon. And so for a $5,000 vacation, again, $5,000 paid vacation, the my quality concierge you call a number they take care of the whole thing you can use that five thousand dollars however you want to go anywhere you want to within my quality one million destinations that you can choose from so have a blast heath hendrix number one tie, three-way tie for second mike and christine reef uh, michael vigil and brent carter now to the top ao Let's see if, brandon i think that's on you i'll let you hit the button yep top okay. agency owner Ashton, the long, uh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to do it. The long love day. Did I get it right? The long love day. The long love day. All right. Lation Toner at number two and the key Basham at number three. So way to go on top AOs. Top agent um, of what we saw was Adam Ellison, number one, Tyler Harris, number two, Lola on, on it. Uh, say it for me, Ren. You got Spotify. it? Unified. I'm terrible at names. Antelia Morales. Yeah, yeah, so those are our top people that um, in our leaderboards. Next week, we're going to be making those leaderboards um, in a downloadable file so you can see how those are going. But remember, all expenses vacation, this runs all the way into the end of October. So make it count. Also want to let you know that my quality bonuses from the producer bonus, the capital bonus, and the bird dog bonus will not be being paid out through my quality this month. Everything will stay the same. It'll be paid out next month in November. Reason behind that, we want to really make sure um, that with our paycheck provider that there is zero disruptions because you work so hard for these commissions. We want to make sure everything stays the same so that it's just as easy, just as quick to get the money you work so hard for. Also, coming at the end of October, you'll be able to sign up for agency owners for the My Quality Agency Owner Credit Card, which again gives you 3% on anything you spend with Quality. So you're standing lead orders, Quality leads, 2% cash back, on anything else you spend for travel sites and 1% on everything else, allowing our AOs a chance to achieve a net neutral cost to run their business and live their life to the fullest for less. So that's our updates, more training resources coming next week. You'll receive another email from us reminding you of the contest and what it takes to qualify as well. We'll be sending that to HQ. That will give you a notification when that gets updated, but great job, guys. Keep it up. Hey, Ethan, there's a few questions in the chat I'll let you jump into on my quality and for those keeping score at home, it's the D Lang Lunde. I've been pronouncing it incorrectly. De Langa Lunde. De Langa Lunde. De Langa Lunde. Every day, including Sunday. Thank you, buddy. I think he sells every day, including Sunday. Uh, man, good God, we got a lot of announcements here. Don't worry, we're going to get to our superstar, Shank, here in a minute, and we'll give you a little more time, Shank, because you got a lot of good stuff to talk about. F and G path setter IUL contest winners. Um, Resi, is this all of yeah. these people won? Yep, all of these people won. You'll what? be getting um, all expenses paid trip to San Diego. It will happen in November. Everybody will get an email to register and set up their uh, flights, and it'll be a fun uh, three day trip in beautiful San Diego in November. So, congratulations, Great. everybody! Congratulations! I want to go to San Diego. Yeah, with F and G, we've more than doubled the the business. The persistency has been higher. We're we're doing phenomenal things with uh, with F and G, and a lot of that through that IUL certification course. We had a record week for IUL as well for the company. Over eight hundred thousand dollars of submit last week in IUL business, and a lot of it's because of these people on here. So congratulations for all your hard work, everybody. Man, it is so good to see all these trips coming about. Thank you, sir. Casey Watkins, Thursday at noon, beginning all, yeah. last Thursday, we got Mr. Miner and the eight-week NEPQ training call, which uh, B-dubs, I've been hearing nothing but great things about. Yeah, Resma and Ditson and, and Eris helping out there. But yeah, just say, I mean, 
feedback's been exceptional. He just crushes it in that environment. He's a great trainer. Y'all, we don't have to tell y'all you've been, you're, you're on it. So um, we're excited to keep downloading those scripts, right, Resma? I mean, getting people acquainted with the why behind it to be more effective. Plus right. 3,000 participants in the first week is my understanding. So well, well done. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, awesome. All right, keep going. Oh, we got a fall blitz on the books. Take a picture of it. Here we come. This fall, learn from SFG's top managers on how to take your results to the next level. We're going to Tulsa, Tacoma, Philly, Little Rock, Phoenix, Boise, Baltimore, St. Louis, Grand Rapids, Orange, Charlotte, Orlando, Jacksonville, Salt Lake City. Oh, we're coming to Asheville. I love that. Fayetteville, uh, Houston, Los Angeles, Nashville, Dallas, Hilton Head, and Savannah, and Fort Lauderdale. Guys, take advantage of take advantage of this blitz. You know, we're we're saying it's it's hard to even call what we're seeing right now and our numbers record breakers. It's like record. We're demolishing records right now. Um, yes. So many, and, and I, I I would I would say with with a fair a fairly good certainty, Brandon, we've never seen record breakers like we're seeing right now. And we 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 had a hunch this was coming, especially coming out of conference and just everything that's going on in the industry, the demand for our product. Um, it's just, there's no better time than right now to take advantage of this, this momentum. So plug into these things, send people to them, recruit to them, hit the road guys, take advantage of this momentum we have right now. It's again, it's, it's the gold rush. So you, do you want to shovel or do you want to get that backhoe out? Time, it's, back time, it's time to go out and get the backhoe. That's um, right. So this is this is a big one. So this fall blitz is going to set us up for some fun stuff in Q1. And that's the name of the game right now. If you guys are kind of kicking yourself, you know, you're not really hitting those records, maybe like some of it. Sometimes it uh, it may be that you're doing the right things. It's just that it's production is a lagging indicator, you know. So if you're really wanting to set yourself up for a, an amazing first quarter of the year in 2023, Everything you're doing right now to build your business is going to show up in Q1. So fall blitzes, record weeks, you know, keep that production, keep that recruiting up, and uh, you're setting yourself up for an amazing one. Yep. How could someone, if uh, getting a few questions in the chat, if someone wants to, they see a gap in where the tours are going to be and they want to do one, um, who should they reach out to, Mr. Spivey, if they themselves may want to even host one, assuming that they're agency owner and qualified to do that. I'm seeing some people say that uh, they would like someone somewhere maybe further up in the Northeast, um, maybe Jersey, for example, maybe. Yeah. Boston. So we we're very fortunate to have several key leaders involved in this initiative behind the scenes and making sure that we're reaching as many people as possible. And very fortunate to say Cicely Newsom is helping lead that charge. So if you'll get with your AO, get with your direct, if you do not know Cicely personally and get an email to her, and of course, always can email agent success at clearly.com. Love it. Also not seeing anything in North Dakota here. We'll revisit that one too. Let's see. I put in for one, hopefully during bird hunting season. That's yeah. South Dakota, right? Or is that North Dakota? Either way. Imagine you do both. I think you can hunt birds in either one of those areas. Todd, you got a Todd talk coming up uh, on reset season three. Ooh, long awaited, right? Coming up next Thursday or next yeah. uh Friday, sorry. Fired up, great conversation with Mike Resno. We're going to go in deep on re, on resets and just what it can do for your organization, what it can do for your clients. As we talked about, it's not um, it's it's not out of out of reason to think that this is a way for you to grow your current income by thirty percent without very uh, with very minimal extra effort. So look forward to jumping in with that. Mike Resno is a great guest and provides so many nuggets. So make sure you're tuning in and share with your teams. Love it. Thank you, sir. Upcoming events, Mutual of Omaha on Thursday, holistic sales approach with Moo add-on products. And as uh, Rezzy was talking about earlier, um, we got our advanced markets training and FIF resets uh, on Tuesday, the 11th, Sigworth and Burks. It's going to be a good one. And thus concludes our announcement and leaderboard section of our program. <laughs> Take one today. <laughs> Whew, sorry about that. I tried to go fast and uh, it was, there was just a, so much good stuff to talk about, celebrate, roll out that I just wasn't able to. But um, Jordan Shank, I want to give you as much time as uh, you would like to pour into folks because I know they're really excited 
to hear from you. Um, You're on vacation you right now, aren't you? <laughs> I am. Yeah, I am in the mountains of uh, Georgia with uh, some family. So we rented a big old cabin. So uh, coming to you a little bit, a little bit different uh, background than, than normal, but wouldn't want to miss the opportunity to uh, be able to be with the Symmetry family. Man, absolutely, buddy. Really appreciate you. You in Blue Ridge? Uh, we're in a little town called Ella J. Ella J. We know Ella J. So, too. Yep. Very well. To be honest with you, I don't even know where it is. I just got in the car and drove. So <laughs> that's good. The way it works these days. Here I am. Ask your phone to take you there and it does that. So. That's right. That's um, right. Major gratitude to you, buddy. Won't uh, spend a lot of time because I know you got a lot of lot to get into, but not only you, your entire family, um, such a an important part of the organization. So couldn't be more grateful to have you on with us, even on your on your vacation, taking some time away to to pour into folks, man. So who you got uh, joining you? today. Absolutely. Well, we have got a rock star lineup here today. I'm so incredibly proud um, of, of just the team. And, and, you know, before we dive into that, Brandon Casey, Brian, Todd, Brian Williamson, everyone just want to say, you know, so much gratitude and love for you guys. And um, I, I know every speaker for these call, conference calls gets on and says the same thing. And I think it's so appropriate, right? Because you guys have really laid the, the tracks for us to be able to come in and build not just a business, but build a life. And um, we are so incredibly grateful. My family's so incredibly grateful. And um, so just want a massive, massive shout out to you guys here. Um, yeah, so we've got um, my one and only Steve Shank, um, who is an agency owner in my organization. I will introduce him later a um, little bit. We've also got Devin Bowersox. Um, Devin Bowersox has only been here since April of this year. Um, first 90 days, issued paid $51,000 uh, while working part-time at another job. Uh, by September, he's already up to six writers and is in the middle of an AO run. Um, absolute rock star. He makes it look easy. Um, and by far one of the most positive human beings I've ever met. Every morning I wake up to a text um, of gratitude, um, just walking how much he's grateful for this incredible opportunity. Um, so he is a leader worth following. Can't wait for the, the, the company to get to know him a little bit. Um, and then also Michaela Cook. Um, Michaela Cook is another one that you know, kind of came in and really just made a name for herself for the level of excellence that she operates with. Um, one of the number one writer in my organization at the moment for the year um, and is not building an awesome organization herself. So we're excited to dive into to how these folks did it and, and how they got off to such a fast start. So um, awesome. awesome. Well, take it away, buddy. Appreciate you being on the yeah. call. Appreciate all you guys cool. being on the call. You bet. Awesome, guys. Well, um, Thank you everyone for, for having me on. Um, this is an incredible opportunity for us. So incredibly grateful for um, this opportunity. You know, I, I said thank you to the owners and the founders of this incredible company, but I would be remiss uh, if I did not mention and also just say so much thank, uh, gratitude and, and um, uh, really just indebtedness to the entire corporate staff, Todd, Brian, and everyone else. Um, that works behind the scenes. We get to do what we do, which is protecting families, building organizations, empowering agents. We get to do all that because of a lot of the work that you all do behind the scenes. Um, and the way that the company is growing, the, the way that we're innovating is in large part due to you all. And so I just want to say thank you for that. It's something that we, we see, we recognize, and we are so appreciative of. Um, also, uh, you know, my direct upline, Ashley Tar Harris and Tyler Harris um, and, and Danny Young, um, thank you. Uh, thank you for introducing me to this opportunity. Thank you for your continued mentorship in this opportunity. And thank you for this partnership, um, you know, because we've been able to do some awesome things. And I, and I think the, the future is very bright as we continue to work and to collaborate. And um, we get to run through this path that you all helped to forge in the early days of this company and uh, just could not be so more grateful for you all um, and, and what you all bring. So um, guys, our topic for today is win big, win early, leveraging the system for fast success. And I've got an amazing group of rock stars on this call. Um, can't wait to introduce you to every single one of them and to hear from them. Um, and it's really our goal that by the end of this call, the broader symmetry nation would understand that those that are represented here, the, the folks that have had some amazing success here 
Um, at the end of the day, uh, we are just a, a group of people that were willing to do common things uncommonly well. Um, and at the end of the day, that's what our system is. It's, it's a way to build a business through the sale of life insurance, right? Very common, been around forever. It's hardly new, but we get to do it in a very uncommon way, right? With innovation, with you know, the most profitable way that, that you can build a business as well as the most fun way that you could build a business. Um, and so on today's call, we're gonna talk about how to leverage that system to get results and to get results fast. Um, in preparation for this call, um, I looked up the definition of the word leverage, all right? Leveraging the system, what does that mean? And what, how, what, when we say that, how, what are we exactly referring to? Um, and the definition is this, to use something to its maximum advantage to use something to its maximum advantage. And in order to use the symmetry system to its maximum advantage, there's three things we need to leverage. The first thing we need to leverage is leverage the tools that make up our system. When we say the symmetry system, what exactly does that mean? And how do we actually use them and apply them to our businesses? We need to leverage the resources that we have available to us for next level growth. That's the second thing. And then the third thing is to leverage the culture, which is actually the conduit for relationships, okay? So we're leveraging tools, resources, and culture. And to help me on this call, I'd like to make a few introductions. Number one, um, I'm gonna turn it over to you here shortly, Devin Bowersox. Again, you heard me on, on the intro call, but uh, first month was April, uh, first 90 days, issue paid $51,000, which also put him in qualification. And we found out a few weeks ago that he officially earned the slingshot destination kicker to Cabo. So he has officially earned a free trip to Cabo um, in his first 90 days. He simply made it look easy. He did it with a smile on his face and he did it while working another job. Um, absolute rock star there. Um, he's, uh, as of September, he had six writers for the month of September, October, he's already on a tear and um, get ready because he, his is going to be a name um, that we hear on the leaderboard. So um, Devin is, is number one, then we're going to hear from Michaela Cook. Again, Michaela Cook is the top producer on our team. She's uh, the number one writing agent on our team. And what's unique about Michaela is she was also the first one to really pilot and um, help to create our agent mentor program. We call it our agent success mentor program in the agency and watching what that did for her business, watching what she was able to pour into other people, um, specifically within the base shop. Michaela, your impact on the company cannot be more. Um, so grateful for you. So grateful for the way that you do this business and can't wait for people to hear their, your story. Um, and last but not least, uh, agency owner, Steve Shank. Um, and for those noticing a family correlation or a last name correlation, yes, he is my father. You know, when we talk about recruiting, um, some people are out there getting new producer packets and contracts. You know, we ask in our agency for a DNA test. Um, you got to be related to somebody in order to get on the team. That's usually how it works. We are we, we run things as a family. Um, and absolutely love it that way. Um, so we have the privilege of building this business along with um, my, my mom, Janice Shank, seasoned leader um, who has just helped to create the culture of, of um, our organization in some amazingly powerful ways. So guys, that's who's on this call. I um, highly encourage y'all to, li to listen to them and listen to what we've got to, to say and to, to pour into you guys. And our goal is to really serve you all here well. Um, number one, I want to hear from Devin. Devin, you know, you are someone who came in and really leveraged all aspects of the system. You're someone who came in and and really jumped into every area that 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 uh, we talk about coachability leads, l leveraging all of the tools that were at your disposal, buddy. So I'd love to hear how did you do it and, and what are some things that someone that, that's in their first 90 days can do to get the same results you have? Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> you know, coming in out of the gate we have access to so many invaluable tools, resources, abilities to you know, emphasize on skills, whether they're present or developed throughout the journey. Um, you know, we just have access to so many things as soon as we step in the door. Number one being Summit, number two, Scripps, access to our core carriers, which gives us so much flexibility and an opportunity to serve our clients on a much deeper level, a much greater level, and to, to ensure that we're doing 100% what's best by them. 
Um, you know, some more tools that that I found valuable out of the gate were being on every call, plugging into as many trainings as I could. Um, you know, constantly seeking mentorship, guidance, asking questions. Um, you know, I know a lot of new agents, some of mine to boot are a little hesitant sometimes to to reach out and ask questions and they're unsure of themselves. But I, I encourage everybody to to ask as many questions as you need to. Number one, you're not going to get the answers you're looking for unless you seek the guidance that's needed. Right. Mm. Um, and just just overall engulfing yourself. I would say out of the gate, that was the number one most valuable thing that I did was just completely submerging myself. Of course, I wanted a little bit of breathing room here, um, but just making sure that I was plugged in in every single capacity that was possible. I think out of the gate, that's what kind of helped me go from an employee mindset to a, you know an entrepreneurial mindset um, and just really starting to lay that foundational groundwork for for what's coming and what's to come you know, years down the road. So out of the gate, those are some of the, some of the tools that I, I found to be most valuable. That's awesome. Talk to us a little bit more. We got some questions in the chat, Devin. Again, you, you had a great job. You made great money. Um, you know, as Sarah mentioned, uh, you know, you were not broken, broken when you came here for, but came here, but you saw a vision for what this could do for you and for your family. Talk to us about what you saw and what made you call me up at, I think it was 11 o'clock at night one night and say, I just left my six figure job to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. You know, I, I come from a nursing background. Um, I was making good money. I was pretty well established in my career. I didn't, you know, a lot of people that do come here, they're broken, broken. Their backs are against the wall and they have no choice but to fight. But for me personally, I wasn't necessarily in that situation. You know, I knew what was possible here. I've heard all of these people talking and, and, and inspiring and leading all these, these other people. So I knew what was possible. I just was getting in my own way out of the gate, right? Hmm. So I was, I was on a, a four day, 12 night or 12 hour night shift stint. And it was <laughs> Sunday morning at like 4 a.m. I just kind of came to the realization that, you know, symmetry is where I belong. You know, the second that I stepped foot here, I felt at home. I found my family. And I knew that in order to achieve that greater level of success that I knew was possible and that I was destined for, I needed to do something radical, right? So what I did is I built a wall and I forced my back against the wall that wasn't there to begin with and completely burn a bridge <laughs> to a six-figure job because I knew that I needed more. I knew that I was created for more and I knew that more was here. And that just, it just took off. I mean, I just mm. I plugged in, you know, and, and did everything I, I was told to do, right? We're not reinventing the wheel here. We're plugging into a system that is in play and that system is in play because it works extremely, extremely well. And I think for a lot of new agents, um, you know, they worry about not having skills. They worry about not having the experience. I can tell you for certain that I never once thought that I would be in insurance, right? Never once thought that that's where my life was going. But when I came in and I plugged into those initial tools and I started to invest in my skills, being cohorts and trainings, those are so valuable. I think within my first like 45 days, I was in a Finney cohort. And the amount of resources and the amount of knowledge and, and, and value that I pulled out of that changed the entire trajectory of where I was headed. You know, plugging into um, self-development and, and, and just constantly pouring into myself so I could better pour into other people. I think that was absolutely huge. And just constantly sharpening the saw. I mean, we've heard so many people say that, but that couldn't be more true. So, you know, by sharpening the saw, plugging into the initial tools that were already placed into our toolbox, I think just it, it, it just helped reiterate and solidify everything that I knew was possible. And as I started to see those results, I came to the realization that I'm no one special, right? <laughs> like I'm not doing anything special here. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not some random person that came into symmetry and can write twenty thousand dollars a month my first full month in the business. The only thing that sets me aside is that. I wasn't afraid to to plug in, right? I wasn't afraid to force myself to get uncomfortable and grow. And I wasn't afraid to to ask those those questions out of the gate. I wasn't afraid to fall forward, you know? Um, 
And I think that one of the most valuable, <laughs> one of the most valuable skills that I learned throughout my journey so far here was actually convincing my newly, uh, well, how do I want to phrase this? <laughs> my fiance had just given birth to our daughter a week and a half before conference. <laughs> and I, I had to convince her, I had to sell her on letting me go to conference, right? So that was one of the most important skills that I've learned so far. <laughs> um, Proud, amazing sale. Absolutely. Awesome, and to transition from there, sorry, I'll let you, I'll let you take over there. No, go ahead, buddy. I was just going to say, you know, transitioning from, you know, we've talked about some of the tools that I utilized out of the gate, some of the skills and access to things that help me sharpen those saws and develop more skills kind of takes us into speaking of conference, some resources that we have available to us, right? You know, Casey just talked about leads, right? <laughs> leads are our foundation here. I wrote 99% of my business to date off of leads strictly. And the reason being was I wasn't afraid to invest in leads, right? Even on some weeks where I was like, I'm, I'm taking a shot, right? Mm -hmm. I saw four, five, six, seven X return on my investment. And that's the, I think the most important thing for new agents to understand is leads are not a cost. Leads are an investment into yourself and into your business, right? so i think that developing that investment mindset really plays a huge role um yeah man i i think that transition sorry go ahead no okay so you know transitioning back to resources aside from leads i mean symmetry has has amplified the resources that are available to us right even in the days that I've been here, which is less than six months, I, I've seen so many things unveiled and brought to light that are just absolutely industry changing, impactful and empowering to us, which allows us to further empower and impact our clients and, and the people that we're bringing into this. Switchboard being number one, you know, the, the new lead generation systems, Razor Ridge, Quility Digital Leads, they are game changing, right? For example, last night, I think I, I wrote like $7,400 off of one Razor Ridge lead. Like, it's just, it's, it's crazy to see the transition that's happened even since I've been here. Um, my quality is another huge thing. Every single family that I help, I'm making sure that they have access to that. I'm walking them through signing up and they're, they're utilizing that, right? Mm -hmm. And then I would say the number one, the number one most important thing that I have encountered and found of most value here was mentorship from Jordan himself out of the gate. I mean, he poured into me immensely. And then I was introduced to Michaela. <laughs> so here comes a little bit of gratitude on my end. Michaela was the new agent success mentor. And she poured into me more than I could have ever asked for, more than I ever could have imagined. And that value and, and the impact that that made on me and my business out of the gate, I would say, you know, utilizing the tools, the resources, sharpening the saw, saw developing those skills were foundational, but the guidance is what led me to be able to utilize all of those things. So Michaela... <laughs> A huge thank you to you. You are absolutely incredible. You know, your involvement in, in me and in, in my business and my success from day one, the late night phone calls out of the gate. She's a champ. I mean, I remember one night I called her. It was like my second day of writing business. I was like, hey, I have this app to submit. I don't have writing numbers, so I have to do a paper app. She walked me through the entire process. She helped me make sure it got signed, submitted. I think we were up till at least 11 o'clock just going through that, that process. And she has played such a pivotal role in my success here and so many other people's success here. She's an absolute inspiration. She's an absolute powerhouse. Mm -hmm. And she is definitely a leader worth following. And what's really mm -hmm. cool about her being in that new agent success role was I actually had the opportunity once Michaela transitioned into next level growth and next level success, I actually had the opportunity to be handpicked by her and Jordan to step into that role to be able to pour into all of the new agents, coach and mentor, and just constantly not only sharpen my saw now, but sharpen so many other people's saws. And that is strictly because of Michaela and Jordan. So Michaela, you are absolutely incredible. 
And I just want to say again, thank you so much for everything that you've done for me and poured into me. But let's hear from you because I think everyone's been waiting for this. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Devin. And such an honor to be on this call with you. And I think one of my favorite parts about leadership is watching someone that you mentored um, just absolutely take it and run with it. So um, thank you for being that light in, in our agency as well. Um, so yeah, Michaela Hood, Director Jordan Shank, a part of the uh, Tar Harris Danny Young hierarchy, and so blessed and grateful to be so. Um, so I love this topic, uh, particularly uh, because a huge part of my journey at Symmetry has been learning to leverage the system by trusting what my mentors told me to do and leveraging resources to grow leaps and bounds beyond what I thought could be possible in just one year. Um, this past year feels more like three years because of how much growth it has taken place. And I know for a fact that growth would not have happened without our system, our resources, and the amazing relationships available to us through intentional association here at Symmetry. When I came to Symmetry in the summer of last year, I was broke, broken, and burnt out by this 1099 insurance industry that has a reputation for being brutal on work-life balance, health, and finances when mismanaged. My resume has everything from softball coach to barista to swim school manager and employee benefits agency director, but I kept job hopping because I could not find a place that paid me what I was worth uh, with hours that did not compromise my relationships and my health and uh, with the kind of integrity and core values that aligned with who I am. Um, at the start of COVID, I left my six-figure agency director position at another IMO because I could not stomach the lack of integrity required to remain in an upper management position at that company. I bounced around to three other name-recognized brokerages over the next year and got so frustrated that I actually chose to go back to being a barista at nine months pregnant <laughs> just to regroup and to kind of go into survival mode. Um, and I believe a, a person's desire to make a generational impact level change, like coming to Symmetry, attracts challenges to shape them into who they must become or to stop them before they mismanage a gift like this. Uh, for me, that challenge came uh, two days after going full time with Symmetry. Life as I had known it came to an end. I became a single mom overnight. I sold everything I owned. I moved 1,500 miles away from a place I had called home for seven years, and I started over. This was when I decided to lean into the symmetry value in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And I immediately started plugging into relationships and asking questions of people who were where I wanted to be. Ashley Tar hosted a breakout conference in Nashville the week after my life imploded but I used a credit card and I sold my kitchen table to be there. The first thing my mentor Jordan told me what to do was to practice my language like my life depended on it and to invest in leads. So I wrote out my script, I role played with other agents and I sold my couch to purchase my first leads. It has been that investment and ownership mindset that has helped me to win here, even through some of the toughest days of my life. And I believe we are called to control the controllable. So here's what we can control. Uh, first and foremost, your connections and your relationships. Calls like this and the builders call, advanced markets, direct agency calls, all those are places to plug in with other people who have a similar vision and are wanting to grow with you. Trainings like Razor Ridge and Switchboard, Advanced Markets, and even your direct agency. Um, again, places where you can meet agents and cross collaborate and learn from other people as they're learning alongside of you. Group chats and cohorts um, are huge for growth here um, and help me get to the next level. Big shout out to Razor Ridge <laughs> support group because uh, what I've learned there has really helped me to utilize that new lead uh, tool so well. Um, and conference, our biggest one, one we all, all got to experience a few weeks ago, was such a life changing impact being there in person with that energy and being on the ground floor of those up and coming announcements that are rolling out for the coming year. 
um, and association through cross collaboration and intentional reach outs. This is huge. You know, we talk about running buddies and we talk about reaching out and reaching up. Um, and that's a culture that Symmetry has um, created that is just unlike anywhere else I have ever been. Um, another thing is one that Devin talked about, your activity dials and lead investment, just two critical pieces to this well-oiled machine that we call Symmetry. Um, and lastly, my personal favorite is personal development. So fun fact, you do not get to be who you are in this moment to get to that next level that is tugging on your heart currently. And for me, that started with coaching groups. Um, big shout out to Penny Coaching and also to Jeremy Miner. And a huge thank you to our founders for creating partnerships like that, that can allow us as agents to continue to invest into ourselves and take it to that next level. Another one is calling your carriers direct. This is something I've started setting intentional time in my calendar towards um, 30 minutes to an hour weekly just to reach out and talk to their sales teams and learn more about their products, how to build illustrations and more. Um, all those resources are right at our fingertips there in HQ. Um, and another big one is books. So this is one that when I was in my very survival season prior to Symmetry, I did not make time for. But shortly after coming here, every leader I talked to was reading like 40 books at one time. And I was like, I guess I got to add this to my list. So um, books is a big part of that personal development that has brought me to the next level as well. And if you're in a season where you're just beginning to sort of dabble in that side of growth, I would highly recommend starting with Miracle Morning or Failing Forward by John Maxwell. Another big one for me is podcasts. I realized that I had to control the voices I was allowing to influence my life, the energy that I was allowing into my atmosphere on a daily basis, not just through friendships and relationships and people I was cross associating with within symmetry, but also what I was listening to. And so being really intentional with those podcasts that I've invested in over the last year. And lastly, one that I am particularly fond of and grateful to Symmetry for shedding light on is counseling. Um, so for me, that was cognitive behavioral therapy, working with a, a coach that specialized in working with people who were entrepreneurs and in business. But I realized that I needed a trained professional to meet with to help me to take a step back, look at my life and reflect on the good um, that I could continue to grow and carry with me and the areas that I needed to actually step into a different area. In. And so highly recommend that and super thankful to Thrive for how they highlight um, the importance of counseling as a part of what helps to actually take us to the next level. So who you are today got you to where you are today, and thank God for that. But I am a different woman today than I was the day that I made my first dial here at Symmetry. And I'll be a different woman at the end of this quarter, and I'll be an even more different woman when I hit 120. This has been a year of hosting funerals to habits and mindsets and relationships that no longer align with where I'm headed. And without the relationships here at Symmetry that truly paved the way, I would not have been able to identify so quickly what I needed to give up and what I needed to pick up to take it to the next level. We are never done evolving, but it is our day-to-day -day choices that determine what direction we evolve in. Symmetry has built a culture of leaders who are passionate about seeing you hit your next level, whether you are direct to them or not. It's on you to leverage that by plugging in and reaching out. And it's also on you to become what someone was for you to someone else in this journey. Whether it's in your recruiting or just being a present teammate, you have something to offer here. Even if it just starts with an encouraging word on group me. This culture we have built not a, a continues if we each strive to pass the light of symmetry on to others. And our next speaker, agency owner Steve Shank, was among the first to share that light with me when I came to symmetry. Awesome. Great job, Michaela. You are absolutely incredible. The chat is blown up with people who... Uh, just resonate with your story. Thank you for being open and honest and vulnerable and sharing. And it's no surprise that people um, flock to you and lead and, and want to be on your team and follow you. And so uh, well done. Thank you for being you and uh, the sky's the limit for you. Um, our next speaker, as, as Michaela mentioned, the one and only Steve Shank. And I just want to make a note 
Um, on this, you know, Sarah and Jamie Capernel uh, on the builders call, we're talking about this idea of the first follower, right? And so every leader needs someone who is willing to kind of step outside and, and be different and, and own something that, that maybe look a little bit funny to, to some people. And they shared that video of the guy dancing and somebody else coming along dancing with them. And, and that was really the story. Steve Shank, my dad was my first follower here in this business. Um, for those wondering how I recruited him, it went something like this. Hey, dad, I'm now in life insurance. He said, well, do you think I can do it? I said, well, I think so. Um, I don't know what I'm doing, but you should come check it out. So in case anyone's wondering if you need to have some perfectly uh, polished recruiting script, let me tell you, you don't. Um, it works. So dad, thank you for being my first follower and uh, for being you and for building this incredible organization. And I uh, can't wait to hear what you have to share, share about uh, really leveraging the culture. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, uh, Jordan. And uh, Devin and Michaela, both of you are absolutely uh, excuse busters. Um, there is no excuse. If someone were to say, boy, I've had a lot of challenges and difficulties to overcome. I'm dealing with other things. All they have to do is remember, Michaela, the example that you set. And Devin, well, I'm not in insurance and I'm not this. I'm never in sales and I'm young. Both of you are just setting a blazing testimony of what can be done if you simply get into the system and connect to people. So I couldn't be more honored to be a part of the, the agency with you. Uh, Janice and I, um, let's see, I'm direct to Jordan Shank, obviously, and beyond honored to be so. Uh, we're part of the Danny Young and the Tyler Ashley Harris agencies. I hope I said that correct. I'm always calling her Tar, but Ashley Harris now. And uh, Janice and my journey in, in symmetry began in August of 2016, where we attended the first conference. Uh, Janice was not uh, licensed, and I had had my license for about uh, two weeks. Uh, had no prior experience in sales or insurance, and yet 11 months later, uh, we were agency owners. And when I went to the conference, I was taken aback uh, at what I was witnessing. The humility of the founders, the transparency and humanity of the presenters, whether they be on the main stage or in a breakout session, uh, it was overwhelming, to be honest. I was being submersed into a culture that I didn't know existed. It was one of honor and encouragement and gratitude and recognition and fun and humor and teamwork and servanthood. Uh, work ethic, uh, applauding the right things, vision casting, possibility thinking, people uh, and who were invited, you know, everybody in the conference was just invited to, to dream a bit and to think of what they can become, think of what they could do. Uh, it was, it was mind boggling. And what, what I knew was that uh, I wanted to be a part of this. It took my breath away. And so what I was taking in was the culture of the company. I didn't know what an app was. I didn't know what an override was. I didn't know what modal premium met, meant. Uh, I didn't know anything about the business, but I knew that there was a dynamic and a culture uh, among these people that I wanted to be a part of. Uh, I didn't want to do it any other way. I didn't do, want to do it with any other people. Um, the definition of, of culture is simple the behaviors and the beliefs of a, char a, a characteristic of a particular group of people. And even on the builder's call, we heard Sarah Reinecke just talk about culture and profitability. Both are critical. And if you slack off on the culture, things can fall apart quickly. Uh, Jamie said, I was here for the culture. We needed each other again. Um, as Michaela said, one of the things that we hear regularly, you're in business by your, for yourself, but not by yourself. And even Brandon referring to relationship management and the importance, especially as leaders, uh, that that category is. All of that speaks to character or, and to culture and to how we're trying to do our business. So I want to just lay out a couple of things of what we understand about people. What, what do they rise to? What do you rise to? What did I rise to? 
And then a couple of practical things in terms of how you can make sure the culture in your downline, in your agencies, uh, in your relational networks, in your base shop, that that culture is growing and thriving and deepening. Structure and strategy changes all the time. We've seen that over the last two, three years with COVID and all the other stuff going on and switchboard and so forth. Uh, there'll be changes next year. We can know that. But the culture and the things that hold us together and the things that act as dynamics and as uh, concrete, holding us together, glue, those things shouldn't change. They should only deepen and mature and become even more uh, pronounced as we go along. So just things that you we already know, people work hard for money, but, but they work harder for meaning and significance and purpose. People work hard for money, but, but they work harder if someone believes in them and has faith for them. When I came to this business, I didn't know I could do this. Honestly, I had no idea. I thought you had to be a certain particular type, type A or whatever it was. But it was Ashley, it was Jordan, it was others, it was Janice, my wife, saying, you can do this. You can stay in the game, do it long enough, and you can wind up where you can't possibly see for yourself right now. People work hard for money, but they work harder when someone helps them believe that they can be bigger than what they see for themselves at the moment. People work hard for money, um, but they work harder if they feel that they are important to others as people. Like it or not, community is written into the human DNA. We can survive alone, but we thrive together. And that is what I experienced at that conference, even though people were scattered all over the country, they wanted to be together. We saw it at the mealtimes, we saw it at the breakouts, we saw it at the chatter in the hallways. They were having a blast doing a hard job, but it was not as hard because they were doing it with people they wanted to be with and they liked. That's a part of the culture that Brandon and Casey and Brian have built were standing on their shoulders. Uh, people work hard for money, but they work harder if they know that those they work with have their best interest at heart. So make sure that those that you care about, those that you've recruited, those that you're training, those that are a part of your business, make sure that they feel that you have their best interest at heart, not just the bottom line, as, as everybody knows. Uh, people work hard for money, but they work harder if they're in an environment of grace as well as challenge. Some of us need high challenge. We all need high challenge at one time or another. But if the climate is one of grace and affirmation and reassurance and repairing of relationships if that is necessary, it all goes a long way to create a culture that helps us survive together. Uh, people work hard for money, but they work harder if they're given a dare. I remember, I think it was actually one of the first things she said, you're going to be an agency owner in no time. And I had no concept of that. I thought, I, what? I, I didn't even think I was allowed to think that. And she just said, no, you love people. And they, that, they will overlook the mistakes that you make if you simply care for people and put them first. So people respond to a dare to challenge them, to come out of their comfort zone, to think of themselves bigger, and have a belief that they can be a different place and a different person a year from now. Uh, people work hard for money, but they work harder when they're appreciated, when they're respected. Um, so I could just go on, but you get the idea that there is an aspect of the culture that we nurture and develop and increase. People work harder when they're respected and when they're treated with respect, when they're applauded, when they're recognized, when they are appreciated, when they know that their contribution means something to somebody else. That ties them in. That makes them feel like it's not just them day in and day out working by themselves on a Zoom call with, an eight, with a client somewhere in another part of the country, but they have people that care for them, they have people that mean something to them. They have people that they mean something to. That is all a part of a family culture, a community culture, a team culture, that especially as leaders, we're responsible to model. We're responsible to um, make sure that that is healthy and thriving in our agencies. And Jordan, you have done that. You have done that repeatedly. And I'm 
and we're running out of time here, but I want to thank you for that. Um, that's what I experienced when I came to my first conference, and it's something that I've experienced at every conference since. Um, and then the times that we have together in the, um, the you know, the, the different uh, fall tours and spring tours and things of that sort, the live events. One of the greatest gifts that we can give to somebody is that their life can be bigger, is a spark of belief that their life can be bigger and more impactful than it is today. And that if they stay at it two or three years from now, they simply will not recognize themselves as a person, as a leader, the stature they've become financially, the people that they've influenced, not only clients, but other people that they brought into the business and trained. That's all a part of our culture. So the, the big thousand dollar question is, how do we do this? How do we strengthen the culture in our agencies? And I try, I've thought a lot about this. It, you can boil it down to two words, okay? The first word is always. And as a leader, write this down and, and think and evaluate yourself as to this. Always, always, always. So what do I mean by that? There is always something to be happy about. Well, I was going to go for a walk, but it's raining. Okay, great. You get a free car wash. It's perspective. Okay. There is always something to be grateful for. Always. There is something that I can find to be thankful for. If Jimmy Spilbenner, before he died and knowing he was dying, could stand on the stage and look all of us in the eye and say, we have so much to live for, and we have so much to be grateful for, then shame on us if we walk around griping and complaining about the leads that are going up a couple bucks. It's ridiculous. I have a post-it card right on my desk that reminds me, a day complaining is a day wasted. There is always something to be grateful for. There's always something to be hopeful about. You had a bad month. Okay, well, guess what? It's a new month. Get going. You're not dead yet. We can go. We can grow. We can make something happen. Something to be humble about for us all. There is always something to be humble for us. That affects how we relate to other people. And if you don't believe that, you might, I don't know, you need more mirrors in the house or something. I don't know. There's always something to be sorry for. I've been on a lot of teams, business, school, career, sports. And I've never been on one team yet where every player didn't make an error. This is not heaven. This is not perfect, but it's a great company and we work with great people. But every now and then you bump into things. There's always something to be sorry for. It should make us walk with a limp and humble towards one another. There's always something to be forgiving about. There's always going to be times where we just are able to forgive people or something that has happened and move forward. There's always something to be in faith about. There's always something to be excited about. And there's always someone to say thank you to. And folks, I know it sounds like a broken record, but it's sincerely in my heart. We stand on Brandon and Brian and Casey and our mentors and others' shoulders. 99% of us in this company would not have the vision, the faith, the finances, the opportunity, the career path that we have now if it weren't for their leadership their sacrifice, their innovation, their steps of faith to do something that others aren't doing with the intention to create a company so that the maximum amount of people can get a piece of it. Honestly, if, you don't, if you're not grateful for that, I don't know what's going on because we, we just are among the best company in the planet as far as I'm concerned. So you wanna strengthen the culture of your agency Always find something to be grateful for. Always be appreciative and so forth. And the other word is the word others. Others, 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 others. Honor others. Consider others more important than yourself. Encourage others. Care about others. Care about your team. Applaud others. Accept others, even if they're different than you. Appreciate others. Serve others. Recognize others. Thank others, promote others, help others, speak what is possible into others when they're having a down patch, envision others. 
if we just have, have this list of always things that I can do and others that I can always be a conduit of grace and encouragement and affirmation and positivity and help, it will go a long way to what Sarah was saying earlier, protecting your agency because it's critical, especially if things hit a patch, you don't want things falling apart. These are things that hold us together, not just the financial bottom line. So I love the fact that Jordan, you have created an incredible culture. We just had a leaders retreat with Ashley and Tyler. It was a phenomenal in what we were doing and strategizing on, but you know the highlight? This, she made this incredible meal for everybody and we just hung around and had a glass of wine and this phenomenal meal and chatter and connecting. That's culture, folks. It's culture. And it's every bit, as Sarah said, as important as profitability. And maybe those are some things that can uh, provoke culture among us and, and strengthen it even more. So Jordan, back to you. Absolutely. Well, great job, Dad. Thank you for um, sharing that wisdom. That was absolutely incredible uh, for how to leverage this culture, how to take advantage of it. So many good nuggets there. The chat was blowing up. Um, you know, a, a day spent complaining is a day wasted. Um, that is absolute gold right there. So, Todd, I will kick it back to you. Um, so much gratitude for you, buddy. Thank you for allowing us to be on this call and to, to pour into this uh, incredible company. I uh, love you guys so much. And uh, I'll turn it back over to you. Man, I'm, I'm uh, officially on page three of notes. So to, to you, Jordan, your entire team, the way you continue to lead, the, just the human being that you are, buddy, you're, you're special to, to myself and just always have envied how you carry yourself and who you are as an individual. So know that and to hear from you Michaela and Steve and Devin that was just tremendous so many great nuggets such a great call today we appreciate everybody pouring in we appreciate the intention of bringing uh, facts and information that we can apply to our businesses today to improve in, in, in a lot of ways so beat ups anything from you bud Nope, this is the real deal crew right here. I mean, talk about depth of character and authenticity and yeah. just pure passion and vision. I mean, this is the group. So, so grateful. Jordan, for our friendship and Steve and uh, Michaela and Devin, look forward to getting to know you both. But outstanding call. Appreciate you all. Appreciate everybody. Take care. Have a good day. You too.